What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's little cigar talk on the balcony, I wanna break down the topic of cap rates and why they are almost irrelevant most of the time when you're valuing real estate deals. I apologize for the background, guys. I am in downtown Tampa, Florida. So before we get into it, my name is Armand Violi, commercial real estate broker, done over $100 million worth of real estate transactions. So I know a little bit about valuing real estate and how investment groups and things look at it. And very first thing and a common myth in the industry is a lot of people value properties based on what cap rate it is. And the thing is, that's almost the most irrelevant financial metric that you could be valuing real estate off of. And let me break that down for you. Ultimately, the idea of buying real estate is you want to buy uh, an asset that has some deferred maintenance or has some gap in the marketplace that you can add value to it. Let's use an apartment building, for example. If there's an apartment building that's outdated, the market is in need of more nicer apartment buildings, you have a bunch of units that are vacant and they need repairs to it, you would go in there, buy this property, improve it, modernize it, get the down units ready to rent. You would rent those out, obviously raise the rents because now it's a more desirable property. And in turn, that increased net operating income NOI is going to increase the value of the actual property exponentially. So now you could sell and refinance it. The thing with cap rates is it's only looking at the cash flow based off the total purchase price of the property. And there's two main problems with that. One is you usually are buying real estate with some sort of leverage. And the reason why you buy real estate with leverage is because you can get a higher return on your dollar by using the, the bank's money because typically returns of real estate will be higher than the bank's interest rate. So you could reap more of the upside while only having to put a minimal amount of the capital into it and just pay a little bit of interest along the way. So first you're gonna buy it with debt. So now you should be looking at cash on cash returns, not cap rate. All real estate, when you buy it, unless you're buying large stabilized assets for a long-term hold, which almost no one is in the real estate game until they're super rich, you're gonna be spending money to make improvements to that property. So whatever that year one cash flow is essentially null and void in the grand scheme of things. So really what you should be valuing real estate off of is how quickly can you get your cash and cash returns to a healthy amount within the first two years. And the reason why I say within the first two years, yes, the more advanced real estate investors, they're okay with losing money and spending tons of money on properties and buying at very low cap rates, very low cash flow for a long period of time because they are advanced at underwriting, they understand markets, they have a lot more capital to spend, and they can bank on the fact that the property is gonna be worth exponentially more in the back end and be much more back end focused as far as. Meanwhile, someone who's less risk adverse and less experience, you should be going for some light value add properties, relatively stabilized, but still some value you could add to it to increase the, the revenue and the actual equity of the property without having to commit so much capital that you're in the red for so many years. So the reason why I say first one to two years is you want to see like, all right, I'm going to buy this property. I'm going to spend money improving it. I'm going to spend money fixing cabinets. I'm going to spend money painting it, spend money making it look nicer, cleaning it up, getting better tenants in there, whatever. You want to see how much money I'm going to do besides a down payment, that capital expenditures within the first year and what can I get my actual cash on cash returns to by year two? Because ultimately your cash on cash returns is going to dictate the actual returns of the life of your investment. Most investment groups, syndicators, funds, they're always quoting a combination of things, a preferred return. And then after that is going to be like an internal rate of return over the life of the investment. The problem with being internal rate of return focused is when you're underwriting your internal rate of return over, let's say a five year hold, yeah, you can get your cash flow and make this much money over the cash flow of those five years of the property, but the amount of profit you make on the back end is going to be heavily reliant on outside factors you can't control. For example, if you're a real estate guy who bought their deal, let's say five years ago, and you're like, oh, I'm going to exit my property in five years and now it's 2022, 2023, and you thought you were going to exit at a five cap, guess what? Interest rates went up drastically to almost 8% your exit plan and your overall internal rate of return was greatly reduced. So there's a lot of variance with that. Now with cash on cash returns, if you could get your cash on cash returns north of 10% by year two, regardless of how your exit's going to look, as long as you're increasing the rents of the property, increasing the NOI, and increasing your cash on cash returns, you're gonna increase the value of the property, but you could better predict your returns on the investment because you have actual physical cash flow now after you made improvements to the property, assuming you're able to do that all in year one and start to increase revenues year two, three, four, and five. So when you guys are looking at valuing a real estate deal, I understand people like to look at cap rates going into it, but cap rates is really just a quick snapshot to compare it against what other things in the market are trading for. So when I'm looking at properties here in Tampa, Florida, I do mobile home parks. 
If someone tells me, oh, this mobile home park, they're asking a 10% cap rate for it, that rings a bell. Hey, why is this trading at such a high cap rate? What's wrong with the property? Only because I know properties usually trade at 6% cap rates for mobile home parks here around Tampa, Florida. They actually trade even, even higher prices, like 4% cap rates. But that's an irrelevant thing because something could trade at a 4% cap rate, which is negligible cash flow. And it's actually gonna be negative cash flow because interest rates are higher than 4% or 7%. But if there's a lot of income potential and you could do a few key value adds to it, and now all of a sudden you, you're having crazy returns, then that going in cap rate was irrelevant. That's why you have big funds paying literally 2% cap rates for giant multifamily deals in Miami, Florida. It's because there's so much rent growth potential, the market will pay for improvements to the property. You could take a C-class apartment building, get it to a B plus, and now your rents could essentially double because it's that high rent of a market. Meanwhile, you're not gonna buy a non-cash flowing asset in some random market of Nebraska because you're not gonna have high rent growth. So if you're not gonna have high rent growth to, to justify a low return day one, obviously that's gonna sell at a higher cap rate, but that's still irrelevant because it depends the type of debt you can get on the property and the type of returns you're gonna get on the capital invested, AKA cash and cash returns. Ultimately, the name of the game in real estate is to buy an underperforming asset, get it to performing and either exit or refinance to pull your cash out. And now you have a cash flow producing asset. Hope this video is helpful. If you guys are a mobile home park investor and you were thinking about selling or you wanted me to underwrite it and give you a free six page PDF, head over to mhpvalue.com. If you guys are a commercial real estate investor or mobile home park investor too, and you're struggling to find off market deals or you are someone that wants to learn how to find deals for large investment groups, I do have a course and coaching platform called CREDealAccelerator.com. You can head over to that website. I do have free guides on there that are no upsells or anything, totally free guides that teach you guys how to find large scale commercial real estate deals rapidly and quickly. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.